Good morning. We are in Galatians chapter 3. The title of the teaching today is Justified by Faith. Um, remember, at the close of our last teaching, when we were covering Galatians chapter 2, Paul had addressed that, um, that they have a righteousness that has been put on them as the children of God through their faith in Christ and not by the law. But he goes on here in chapter 3 to really get um, detailed and more specific um, in this same uh, thought that we are justified by faith. So let's begin here reading in Galatians chapter 1. And I'm going to read through the, this, this chapter and then we will talk about it at the end. to take just a few minutes to read through. It says, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only what I learn of you, received you the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? We'll pause there just for a second. He's saying, are you cleansed by the flesh and by your work in the flesh? flesh or are you cleansed because you have the spirit of, of Jesus and the spirit of God on you because of your faith and trust in Christ he says in verse 4 have you suffered so many things in vain if it be yet in vain he therefore that ministereth to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of, by, be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth to thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, 
There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Remember in our teachings prior, we really have been pretty thorough in covering why it is that Paul is addressing the church in this way, uh, continually reminding them that they are no longer under the old law, that Christ, the Messiah, had come, prophecy had been fulfilled, and they are now to live by faith. They are now to live by the Spirit of God leading them. That, that does not ever contradict the words of God. The Spirit of God will never lead you contrary to what the, the Word of God has taught. But Paul says you you are now no longer uh, having to come into the temple and offer up these sacrifices and do all these things that you had been doing in order for you to have, you, you know, to show that you are living by faith. Um, that this, that you had to do a works. You had to bring in your uh, offerings of sacrifices, you know, and, and they had certain laws that, that must be fulfilled in order for them to be living in, uh, living in God and living in the right way. But now it is by faith. And Paul mentions the spirit uh, in inside of the people. And one of the things in, in earlier in the chapter, um, he, the spirit of the spirit of God, uh, he mentions it, it is the spirit through faith, the promise of the spirit through faith there in verse 14, uh, because of Christ, it says through Jesus in verse 14, 14. Now, uh, this is because many of uh, the believers at the time, um, because they are now living by faith and no longer by the law, were really having a hard time um, making that um making that that a movement in their life and and making it part of their life it really was a big cultural change for them and so we've talked about that before but here in this passage uh paul is getting very detailed talking about the seed of abraham and he is mentioning about the prophecy talking about the seed of abraham that was to come and we know that this this christ did come and he did live his life he he fulfilled the prophecy uh that the scripture had been promising us as a people of God that would happen, that would occur. Now he has come, the seed of promise, which was Christ. But the people are still trying to live like Jesus hasn't come, even though they know he came. So it was just this uh, back and forth. They're, they're trying to figure out what to do. And Paul is used by God uh, to lead them by the Spirit of God. Uh, just as he had done with Moses and, and, and men of old, uh, he is using Paul to lead them under this new way of living by faith. Uh, so he mentions that, that, that they have this, uh, redemption, you know, by their faith and trust in Christ Jesus. And this, uh, verse 22, it says, but the scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe so he goes on to say there remember uh, at the close neither it doesn't matter if you're a jew or a greek it doesn't matter if you're a slave or if you're free it doesn't matter if what gender you are male or female he mentions there and that he says that we are as long as we believe in christ we are now then of the seed of abraham we become an heir of the kingdom we become a child of god through christ so it doesn't matter who these people are and so and so they are not seeing this picture. They are wanting to, to think that, uh, that some of these people that have come in uh, and they're professing Christianity are not actually Christians because remember one of the things was is, um, the circumcision that we spoke about yesterday in the reading that they would, you know, look at these Gentiles and they would look at these Greeks and like, you know, they're heathen because they haven't been circumcised. So therefore they can't be a child of God. And Paul's reminding them again, you don't have to live by the old laws. This is a new, uh, uh, new way of us to be living as Christians. We're living under a new uh, way. Jesus became the law and that our uh, works are justified by faith and no longer uh, are our works justified by the law. 
So this is really clear again that um, it is not through our works that we, we gain righteousness. And even Paul mentions there in this, in this passage in chapter 3 that if there had been a law given for us to have righteousness, then it would have been written. Paul says that was not the case. What was written about was that we would have this um, righteousness put on us simply by our faith and trust in Christ Jesus. And so we see um, Paul again really just really trying to get these people to understand this. So how can we take this for today? Uh, well, as the scripture mentions here, we are justified uh, by our faith. We are forgiven by our faith and trust in Christ. And many, I know it sounds, um, uh, you know, you know, may sound ludicrous, but many people are still trying to live by the law and still trying to judge uh, others uh, by the law. Um, and But this is not to be. If, if someone professes that they have uh, faith and a trust in Christ, then we can't look at their actions and necessarily approve or disapprove. Because even... Uh, even people of old in the, in the Bible didn't always live as they should, but they were still children of God. Um, uh, even Paul at this time, you know, remember if, if you had followed our teachings in first and second Corinthians, there was a lot of sin problems within the people of the church, but they were still, uh, covered by the blood. Now, when Paul says there, this is where I think it's verse 27. Yes. Here's where some people may get confused. For Listen to this. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Um, this is where people um, often are confused by uh, baptism of the Spirit or baptism of water. And Paul is speaking very specifically of the Spirit here in this passage. This is not a baptism of water. This is a baptism of Jesus Christ, which is received by faith. And this is not a works. So it's not by uh, an action. It's not by going and getting baptized with water. He's speaking about the baptism of the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in people once they profess that faith in Christ and they trust Jesus as their Savior. And that is that is the premise for us as Christians today that we uh, are no longer under the law, but we have the scriptures to live by because these are still... Um, uh, a way that we should should be living as Christians. Paul mentions that in his in his writings um, to the churches, and that we should, uh, you know, it should be clear who we are. That we should it should be clear that we are the children of of Jesus Christ, and and in the way that we're living, people should see this. Um, he's and he mentions, I think, in one of the passages. Otherwise, you know. Uh, it, is it in vain it, that that we have had this 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 righteousness put on us through our faith and trust in Christ, but yet no one else we don't spread the gospel, we don't let anyone else know, or we live in such a way that people don't even know who we are. Um, it's important for us to be living um, as children of God so that others can come to know Jesus too. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this reading today and teaching in uh, Galatians chapter 3. Lord willing, we'll be back Monday in Galatians chapter 4. God bless you all.